Today, September 1, has been declared No Music Day throughout Nigeria by the Nigerian Music Industry Coalition. The Nigerian Music Industry Coalition is a coalition of the key national association in Nigerian music industry. Now, September 1 is being dedicated to drawing national and international attention to the widespread infringement of the rights of the composers, the songwriters, performers, music publishers and other stakeholders in the music industry in Nigeria. The Nigerian Music Industry Coalition has indeed declared September 1 of every year as No Music Day, a day once a year, to focus on the long fight for the rights of all creative people in Africa's most populous nation, Nigeria. Broadcast stations all over the country have been encouraged to devote some time on September 1 solely to the broadcast of interviews, debates, comments, discussions and other programs related to the rights of artists and creative people as a mark of solidarity with the Nigerian creative community. Similarly, all national newspapers and magazines have also been requested to do special features and editorials on the subject. Top Nigerian artists and key personalities in the music industry have been asked to make themselves available for interviews and discussions across the various media to make No Music Day memorable. Copyright Society of Nigeria, Kosan, the nation's sole copyright collective management organization for musical works and sound recordings, has declared an open day at its headquarters in Lagos for journalists who may wish to conduct interviews with officers and members of the society or update themselves with the processes of collective management of copyright. What is so special about September 1 that so much attention has been paid to the day? Those who know will tell you that the struggle since Nigeria's independence for the respect of the rights of Nigerian creative talents came to a head on September 1, 2009, when Nigerian artists, in frustration, asked all the over 400 licensed broadcast stations and platforms across their nation not to broadcast any music for several hours. To a lot of artists on that historic day in September 2009, Nigerian artists declared their independence and expressed a refusal to continue to accept a position of servitude and second-class citizenry in their country. Well, No Music Day is a, is a brilliant idea because it basically helps to enforce or reinforce you know, the importance of music you know, in the media and the fact that a lot of this creative content, this intellectual property has been disregarded, you know, and it's just a reminder, you know, to, to everyone out there that, you know, this is very, very valuable content and, you know, it should be accounted for at some point. The No Music Day is a landmark event for the music industry. It is the, our own equivalent of, of an October 1, for example. That is the day where it starts hope, possibility, progress. That is the point at which everything is launched. So uh, No Music Day is, is a birthday of the Nigerian music industry. Hey, my people. Our people talk, say, when her shake, don't pass her boo. You don't talk to um, uh, Jackie Jack. You don't talk to uh, her. You know that? You know, in fact, this talk talk, don't too much. Let me finish piracy before piracy go finish us. Okay. No Music Day 2009 was for us. A day of decision, a day of liberation, a day of independence. That was the day we said, no more, no more. The reason why we need to observe a no music day, personally, personally, you, you see, this is an economy where we hardly respect intellectual property. Michael Jackson estate is raking in money for those kids now. That's because somebody respects intellectual property. Somebody knew that, okay, for every time I play Michael Jackson song in this public space, I need to pay X amount. It doesn't cost my business anything. It doesn't do any damage to me. Well, the No Music Day, I think, is very important because it's amazing how much impact just the one hour of No Music has. Uh, the Kosan slogan is let the music pay. My slogan is you've got to pay to play because at the end of the day, music is not free. It never has been, it never will be. 
There's always a cost associated with producing the music, distributing the music, making it available, and for you to enjoy it. So what we're saying is get yourself regulated, get yourself covered, ensure that your environment, your club, your bar, your restaurant, your bus, your taxi, whatever it is, if it's being played in a public space, you don't own it, an airport, it's gonna be paid. You gotta pay a licensing fee. It's not a lot of money, but that money will together take care of the songwriters, the composers, the producers, the performers, the labels and the publishing companies and create and unlock value for millions of Nigerian creative talent. We don't have any retirement plan as artists. It's not a pensionable job. You're, you're as good as your last hit. So the only way we get pension is if we have organizations actually getting licensed by COSON so the artist can get something back from the CMO. While the request which may have been seen in some quarters as strange had limited success, it set off alarm bells around the country that the patience of the artistic community was about to snap and that it was about time that Sarah's national attention was paid to the pervasive piracy and abuse of intellectual property rights that have devastated an entire generation of creative people in Nigeria. Music is our business. We must protect it. We must continuously stand as one and insist that as long as our music is being played publicly, it must be paid for. No Music Day 2009 was preceded a week before by a huge rally of Nigerian artists, big and small, from every nook and cranny of the nation. The big rally at the National Theatre signaled the beginning of a week-long hunger strike campaign and back to porn by several Nigerian artists. The determination of the artist was such that a young reggae artist fainted during the hunger strike and had to be rushed to a hospital where he was revived. At the rally, artists of all colors spoke out in condemnation of the seeming importance of the government of Nigeria as the dreams of thousands of Nigerian artists are buried under a huge pile of pirated tapes, CDs and DVDs awash and traded in every market and on every street around the country in open defiance of the law and the rights of the owners of the works. According to a lot of the artists, the Nigerian nation had become so drunk in the aroma of crude oil and had become completely immersed in a never-ending struggle to control the oil that it had no time for anything else. The theme of this year, uh, No Music Day, is a world without music. Can we imagine what's going to happen when there's no music? That means the world is dead. When we say no music day, that will support it. It's like, yeah, let's see one day and no music and let's see how the world will look like. World without music. Boy, the whole world is in trouble. Everybody will be dead and buried. There's a breath of fresh air to, to the industry right now because if we take a pause, everybody takes a chill pill and um, look at what we have when we take the music away. We'll begin to appreciate the music and appreciate the creators of the music. Successive governments in Nigeria may be blamed for their little understanding of the gold mine that is intellectual property and the near lackadaisical attitude to tap in this gold mine, which can provide hundreds of thousands of jobs for the teeming unemployed young people in our country who are fast being turned into the devil's workshop. While the authorities take some of the blame, the music industry must accept its own failure. For too long, it was consumed by infighting, endless speakering, too many big egos, and fantricidal words over nothing. With so much ego and rabid suspicion, it was impossible for the industry to agree on any initiative and to have the unity of purpose absolutely necessary to deal with the many challenges confronting Nigerian musicians and the investors in the industry. As a result, piracy took over the industry. From selling music albums for the equivalent of $8, new CDs were being sold in Nigeria for as low as 30 cents. In other words, an industry that once sold music began to sell just the plastic and you know the result was that uh, there was nothing to take home from most of the people who labored in the industry consequently 
all the international investors in the Nigerian music industry packed their bags and baggage and left Nigeria. International music icons like EMI, Sony Music, Decker, Polygram, etc., who used to employ thousands of Nigerians and contribute substantially to the national economy, fled Nigeria to greener pastures with their investments, leaving so many Nigerians in the unemployment market. The significant Nigerian investors, such as Phonodisc, Shanuolu, Tabansi, Rogers All Stars, Melody, Anodisc, Ben, Aphrodisia, etc., became shells of themselves, and a lot of them withered and died. For many years, the challenges appeared too daunting for anyone to even contemplate dealing with it. It was complaints and complaints galore with no action. Things just got worse. It was only in 2009 that some efforts began to bring the leadership of the music industry together with efforts were spurred by the likes of the former president of PMAN and the chairman of PMRS, Chief Tony Okoroji, who had just launched an important book, Copyright, Neighboring Rights and the New Millionaires, which spoke loudly about the problems. You know, Chief Okoroji had formed a working alliance with young renowned talent manager Mr. Ethel Meribe, secretary and driver of Ampi Pro, who was himself manager of many of the young hitmakers of the new generation. The alliance was expanded to include the likes of Mr. Toju Eduechi, Chairman Nari, Admiral Dele Abiodun, President P Man, Honorable John Udebunam, President Moran, and Mr. Joel Ajayi of Malone. Also actively involved were the likes of top singer Ms. Oyenka Owenu, ace producer Mr. Laulu Akins, showbiz and Becerro and president of Ambi Pro, Mr. Eddie Lawani, Mr. Charles Imuluame of Nandrin Music Club, multi award winning music performer Mr. Sonny Neji, Mr. Obi Asika of Storm 360, Mr. Wood Maikori of Chocolate City Music, Mr. Tunji Odubaku of Obey Music Company, Mr. Ima Ogosi, amongst others. For several weeks, this group had endless meetings rotated between three principal locations, the PMN headquarters, the PMRS office, and a medium-sized Ikeja guest house called Hotel 1960. There were hundreds of telephone calls and many exchanges of emails. The result of this hyperactivity was a jam-packed world press conference held at Protear Hotels Ikeja on July 15, 2009, announcing the birth of the Nigerian Music Industry Coalition, a coalition of the key associations in the music industry with membership cutting across age, geography and interest and with a clear agenda to address the different challenges of the industry. That was a turning point. It took so many weeks of several meetings of negotiations, consensus building, of conceding positions, of everyone dropping his ego, of looking at the issues for us to come to the point where we had unity of purpose and which led to the birth of the Nigerian Music Industry Coalition which has changed everything for the industry. Since the formation of the coalition, the labor market pirates that were once untouchable have been constantly raided, arrested and prosecuted following the close cooperation between the Nigerian Music Industry Coalition, the Nigerian Copyright Commission and the police. In one day recently, during a dawn raid, more than 700 CD piracy machines were confiscated from Alaba markets. The alert king Payne of piracy in Alaba, known as Alaba King of Pirates, alias Eze Awalawa, is presently facing trial at the Federal High Court in Lagos. All over the country, a robust raid on pirates is taking place practically every day, from Aba to Uyo to Anicha to Makordi and so on. It was also the Nandrian Music Industry Coalition that brought about the unity of purpose that led to the government approval of Copyright Society of Nigeria, COSAN, one of the most important developments in the Nandrian entertainment industry in the last 50 years.
Just two months after the course on approval, the World Intellectual Property Organization, WIPO, the United Nations Specialized Agency for Intellectual Property in the World, sent a week-long technical team to Nigeria to assist COSAN with technical infrastructure and training. The unprecedented WIPO mission is proof that the world is once again taking Nigeria serious in the area of intellectual property. Other multilateral agencies, such as the World Bank, have pledged assistance towards the success of COSAN. The full endorsements of COSAN by senior government officials, such as the Honorable Attorney General of the Federation, must have warmed the hearts of stakeholders in the music industry and given hope for a better future. In a great display of democratic ideals, Colson has held stakeholders for across the country and working with the core users of music, such as broadcasting stations, is set to end the many years of trauma for stakeholders and is set to provide new income and employment to many in the music industry. Issues like mechanical rights, which had never been dealt with in Nigeria, are also now being addressed. To all music users out there, be it a hotel, radio stations, TV stations, aviation, telecommunications. So long you're using music as a way of running your business, please go to Coson. They happen to be the sole approved CMO by the federal government. 